So let's get into Google Analytics goals. We've talked about the metrics. We're dissecting why you have a website, coming down to the core elements of strategy and then the measures against that strategy of what you're trying to do. But when you're online, you're only gonna be able to see those conversions and those clicks once you have Google Analytics and goals set up. So I'm gonna take some time, go into Google Analytics. It is google.com slash analytics. It is free. It is code that is on every single page of your site. Again, free. Uh, it's easy to set up, it takes less than 30 minutes. It needs to be on every single page and you're gonna be able to see general flows of traffic through your site. So getting started, set up, you have to make sure it's installed, you wanna make sure you're receiving traffic. If you have an AdWords account, if you have a Webmaster Search Console uh, from Google, you wanna set up and integrate those as well. You wanna consider turning on demographics. Someone should be in charge of it, a point person for it, and you know, going through and assigning these is also important. Setting up goals though, that's what I wanna focus on because out of the box, there are no goals set up inside of Google Analytics. So, let me explain this a different way. What are users doing? That is, you know, gotta be a core question in general. I'm gonna use a metaphor. Here's the Bravo supermarkets on Myrtle Ave over in Brooklyn. And without Google Analytics, so let's say you're the owner of Bravo Supermarkets, you can't see anything that's going on. Maybe there are cars driving by, but you're like, I don't know, I think people are coming in and out. We seem to be doing fairly well with sales, but once you install Google Analytics out of the box, you end up with this great view of inside the supermarket, people walking around the different aisles. You can actually see if they're going to the sales and whatnot. Once you install goals, you get down to the exact moments in time and place where people are buying what I think here is a pumpkin squash, picking it out with their you know perfect little family, putting it in their cart, and that's what we need to track with Google Analytics. Google Analytics doesn't know when the family is picking out the pumpkin squash, it knows they went down the aisle, but you need to define that. You need to define that goal so you can analyze it later because it is a KPI, a performing indicator, especially if you're running Bravo supermarkets, to know that those squashes, I think, are going off the shelves. Another way to think about this is setting up goals in soccer. Without goals, without nets, soccer would be even more boring. Now, when you set up goals, you've configured a way to win the game. That's the same thing, metaphor, with regard to the site. You need to set these things up because Google doesn't know where the goal is. So the score is pretty boring. It's just who has the ball the longest. So here's an example of Power Poetry's website. We're gonna go on the site and actually take a look at where you would click on different buttons and what you would track. Well, if you're Power Poetry, we've already talked about it. You wanna know if somebody's adding a poem, someone's filling out a form, someone's logging in. We are tracking all of those things. So let that be a little reminder. When you're looking at a website, you're like, wait a minute. If we're capturing someone's information, that's probably a good thing. If they're signing up to volunteer, that's probably, if they're logging in, if they're buying, a, you'll be able to set these clear goals, ideally, inside of your site to really track what matters, and then you're gonna be able to do more of that, which I'll get into. Once you set up these goals, you get an extra configuration, which I'll throw out, numbers and stats based on the goals you define inside of Google, but I wanna take a step back. So, we have goals set up. Before we move into that, I want you to understand some basic terminology. When we look at Google Analytics, it's spitting out some fundamental numbers around users, sessions, as well as page views. So in this metaphor, we have one user, let's say George, and for lunch, he's gonna have a burger and a salad. So that's lunch, George has a burger and salad. So that's one lunch session, two page views, one user. But for the whole day, I have multiple sessions. So one user can have multiple sessions, and then the page views inside of there. So for this example, this would be one user, three sessions and eight page views inside of this. What you're then able to see is that the user is unique to the day, but the sessions are absolute. So we have absolute sessions and absolute page views, but the user depends on the time frame that we choose. I know I'm throwing a lot of terms at you. Wholewhale.com slash Google will help you with a bunch of glossary items as well as downloadable bundles to help your Google Analytics improve. How are we going to use these data? The key, because you're gonna wander into Google Analytics, or maybe you've done this before, you're gonna wander into these numbers and be like, wait a minute, I thought you were gonna tell me why I have a website, and now I'm stuck staring at numbers. Here's the process by which you can go. You're going through the gather, ask questions, analyze, find insights, then learn and act. Why you have a website depends. Depends on your ability to understand the data that it's generating, and then turn that into actionable insights by doing more. 
Once we've built the bridge and we understand that, oh my gosh, my sort of will it make the go, boat go faster metric that leads to impact actually is more young people creating poetry or for you maybe getting more volunteers or selling more of your widget or your event or that kind of piece. Once you've defined that, you have to do more of it because otherwise the website is still just a static thing you threw up with a form on it. This process is the key to really building and harnessing the actual power of your web traffic. Ask the questions from your team. Build it out, analyze it, and then operationalize it. So the, the classic question, I'm laughing because I've heard this so many times, is the, is the what are people doing on our site? The CEO walks in or the stakeholder walks in and says, what are people doing on our website? and you seek to answer it, but that is a bad question. It's a bad question because it is not specific. It's not even necessarily linked to any of your KPIs or why you have the website to begin with. And it leads you down this goose chase. Well, like, guess what? I'll answer that question for you watching right now. I guarantee your traffic's coming from major cities. I guarantee you have a higher bounce rate on your uh, website, on your homepage maybe. I guarantee that you know your traffic tends to increase when you send out emails. There's a bunch of generic findings that aren't really actionable when you do this. By the way, your weekend traffic drops, like, okay. So here are good questions. Good questions are ones that link to KPIs. Good questions are ones that you could potentially operationalize. Good questions are ones that come from your team and your departments. You're saying, hey, what is really confusing you? What is uh, one thing you really want to know about the, the work you're putting out there? Here's some sample ones, though. Where is our front door? How's our organic traffic year over year? Uh, how's our mobile traffic doing, maybe? Uh, you know, are we reaching decision makers? Let's go through some of these, and I'll answer them with Google Analytics, showing you exactly how we find this information. So first off, let's jump in here. Where is our front door? I'll start by saying this is what I mean by the first page that somebody lands on, AKA the landing page. Now, when you're dealing with the front door, we call it front door disease here at Whole Whale. We call it the front door disease because what happens is there's an assumption that everybody, like most of the people, Coming to your website, go to your front page immediately. That's the landing page. That's why we spend so much time over designing it when we redesign the website. That's why we have all this information scrolling around on it because everyone marches in the front door. Just as though we're a, you know, an office on Main Street and here's our like mannequin in the window and just that's the front door where people come in. So my question to you, we're gonna play a quick game because you know, games. We're gonna play a quick game. Here's whole, uh, no, here's Power Poetry's data. The front page actually is that slash. It's the number one page, certainly for landing pages. As you see, I found it in the behavior section. What percent would you say come through the front door? Obviously, it's not 100% because I just ranted about it. You know, Maybe not 90%, 50-50 perhaps you're thinking. 50% of the traffic maybe comes through the home page, the rest, the other pages. Take a guess, I'll wait, not too long, because you can pause it and do this as well. So here are the actual data. Less than 5%, and I'm showing you a time horizon here of about a year. Aggregated data of landing pages, what the heck? And if you play this, if you play this game with your traffic, I'm willing to bet over under 30%, under 30% come through that front page, which means 70% or more of your traffic is landing. It's coming through on a, on a sub page. I mean, I'm getting excited about this because we ignore those pages so much and we forget that that's how most of the internet is shaking hands with us. Coming through our front door is actually a sub page, a piece of content you wrote maybe two, three years ago. So understand how people are coming into your website. That's a good question. Understanding where that front door is because maybe it's time to update that. Maybe it's time to make sure that you have calls to action on those pages. Now you're starting to think about, oh my gosh, if I did that and I greeted these people properly, you could really increase your impact. Why you have a website begins to matter more. So front door disease, fix your real front door is the action here. Go in there, discover it. You can Google front door disease, uh, ignore the door syndrome. Didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, ours is the next article that you can share with your team and talk about this.